my fellow Hollowed Hunters, this is the Souls Fanatic, and today I will show you how to make Hawkeye's Talking Carvings from Dark Souls. As always, a list of materials is in the description below, and now I will also include time skips to each step in the comments. But without further ado, let's get started. Our first step will be cutting this wooden sphere in half. I chose a sphere with a flat bottom to make this step a bit easier. In theory, we will be cutting this sphere in half so we can put this voice box inside with the button facing the flat surface. I've clamped down a plank of scrap wood to the table. I will drill a hole into the plank and then drill a hole into the bottom of the sphere. And I will use a wooden peg to hold the two together. Grab a peg. Once the sphere is attached to the table, take a pencil and a ruler and sketch a line along the central axis. At first I tried to use the electric jigsaw to cut the sphere in half. But that didn't work out so well, so you will want to use a hacksaw and cut it by hand. Once your sphere is in half, you want to sand both halves flat with some coarse 80 grit sandpaper. Our second step will be drilling a cavity into the sphere large enough to fit our voice box. Now an issue may arise if your sphere already has a hole like mine. The centering spike on the drill bit will bounce around and you will not be able to get a clean cut. So you will first need to use wood filler to fill up the hole and let it dry. Now because I don't own a drill press, I have to improvise. I used a roll of cloth tape to hold the half sphere in place and clamped it down. I drilled down about a centimeter and used the Dremel to clean it up. You want to make sure that your voice box fits, and then do the same thing with the other half. I accidentally forgot to do the other half, and had to fix it a little bit later in step 5. For our third step, you will want to drill two different sized holes. First will be a 3 4 drill bit down about halfway, then the 5 8 drill bit to finish the rest off until you hit the flat. 
We will then cut off a segment of a 5 8 dowel rod and a 3 4 dowel and stick them together to form a push button. Clamping down the half sphere, start by cutting the larger 3 4 hole. Then, when it's about halfway through, switch over to the smaller 5 8 drill bit and drill the rest of the way down. You should end up with two different sized holes. With two different holes, we will have a ring in which the 3 4 doll will stop, but the 5 8 will pass through. Now I will stick the doll in and mark how much I will need to cut with a pencil. I clamp down the dowel and use the jigsaw to cut along the line. Sand down all the spurs until both ends are flat. Now with our flat doll, we can stick them together as a push button. Our fourth step is to begin sketching and carving the detailed face. I recommend using a reference from Dark Souls 3 for this part, as it is the most detailed graphically. There is no easy template for these, and I can't really offer any advice other than just play around with it. I don't have much more to say, so you can skip to the time on screen to skip to the carving part.
Now that I have a decent sketch, we can begin carving with the Dremel. Again, can't really give any tips for this, other than just practice beforehand. Step 5 is where I realized I screwed up, and forgot to carve the big hole to fit the voice box on the other half of the sphere. So I will still have to do that, just a little differently. Since I already drilled the hole for my button, and don't want to screw it up by filling it with wood filler, I will trace the voice box, then use the Dremel to go around the edges, and then extend the hole to the right size. Next you want to stick the dowel together. I drilled into them, but not all the way through, and used a wooden peg to hold them in place. I used the cutter drill bit to cut off the extra and then glued them together.
Make sure that the button fits in the hole and let it dry. Once it's dry, I used a ballpoint Dremel bit to whittle down the peg as well as curve the button to fit the button on the voice box. When you're done, everything should fit together. For our sixth step, we will record the voice from the game onto the voice box. Each voice box works differently, but most will record whatever is being said whenever you push down the inner button. I did my best to give you the cleanest voice recordings I could get from the game. Hello! Thank you. I'm sorry. Very good. Help me. For step seven, we will glue everything together. Because the battery in the voice box will eventually die, I only used a tiny, tiny bit of glue to hold the pieces together. Hopefully when I need to change the battery, I can use a wedge to reopen my carving, but there's no guarantees. Now that our carving is one solid piece, we're going to have to make it look that way. Using the Dremel, I rounded out all the unnatural bumps and cuts along the edges. Then use a fine 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the entire piece. Then use a cloth to clean off all the dust. For our final step, we will stain the carving to look like the Dark Souls 1 version. I will use a dark stain for the outside and a light stain for the details. To get the details to pop, use a lot of stain on the face. Let it pool up into the cracks and wipe away the rest with a rag.
Let the stain dry and you're all done. You have a working talking wood carving. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. I know I'm kind of slow with these uploads, and I'm sorry for that, but I'm still working on it. The next piece that I make will probably either be the Artorius Crest or the Ring Knight Straight Sword. I have both templates finished and I just need to get started on them.